MATLAB programmers! Today we are going to solve this equation um, while well, we're going to plot for the amplitude and the phase of the function. And we've got this cool equation here for values of t between 0 and 4. Well, the first part is the easiest, is getting t between 0 and 4. But if I leave it like that, I've only got five values total. It's not going to make a very smooth graph. So instead of an increment of 1, I'm going to put in a smaller increment of maybe 0.1. And now I've got 41 different points there. The second part, not too bad either. So we've got our function of t, and they gave us the equation 1 plus 0.25. But then anytime you mush two things together, that's multiplication, and MATLAB needs you to put in that multiplication sign. And again, we've got times t, and for every element of t, we're going to be running this function minus 2.0. And I'll just run that to make sure we've got our values of f. And then the tricky part is figuring out, well, what do they mean by the amplitude and the phase of a function? And to solve both of those, it helps to know a few other functions that will help us. One is ABS, so that's the absolute value. So the absolute value of a number, if it's just a a real number, it's going to be getting rid of any negative signs. So the absolute value of 5 is just 5. The absolute value of negative 5, you're going to get positive 5. But the million dollar question is, what if you have a complex number that has a real and an imaginary component? What does it mean to say the absolute value of 2 plus i, and i is the square root of negative 1? Well, we can calculate the answer. We could also graphically imagine that as, imagine I have a graph where the imaginary um, component is on the y-axis and the real component is on the x-axis. And so if I have 2 plus 1i, it's like going to 2 on the x-axis and 1 on the y-axis. And this little tiny red point is that individual point, that complex number. And I could measure the dis distance between this line right here and say, well, that's a distance of 1 because I, I know that that's, um, that's 1 on the imaginary axis there and I could measure this distance and I know that's two and then if I wondered well what's the the third side of this triangle we've got a, a right angle here a right triangle and I know I could use Pythagorean theorem and say a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared to, so to figure out this I could say well it's going to be the square root of two squared plus one squared or the square root of 5, and that happens to be the same thing that we got when we just did the absolute value of that complex number. So that absolute value function is going to do the same thing that we just did right here, and we're going to do that for every single point in our function to get the amplitude of each of those f values. So I'm going to say AMP for amplitude is equal to the absolute value of the function. So that's the first thing we're going to graph. The second thing we're going to graph is going to be the, the phase of the function, and that is this angle. So there's a couple ways we could calculate that. We could use the fact that the tangent of the angle, angle is equal to the opposite over, over the adjacent, and then we could figure out what this unknown angle is, because we know the opposite and adjacent. We know that the opposite is 1 and the adjacent is 2, and so we could say that is going to be equal to this number right here. And that's going to be a number in radians. So if I wanted to go from radians to degrees, I could find out that that whole angle there is about 26.6. Well, there's a shortcut way to do it in MATLAB. You could use the angle function and the angle of, and our complex number was 2 plus i, and again, this angle it's going to give us is in radians, so we could go from radians to degrees and find out, bam, that was the same angle we got before using the um, using our tangent and the opposite over the adjacent. So that's how we're going to figure out the phase. So I'll just do P for phase and say radian 2 degrees of the angle. If I properly label all the axes, it's going to be a lot of lines of code and I didn't want you to have to watch me typing that in. So it starts out the same and I decided to graph one of the graphs on the top, another graph on the bottom in the same figure. So I use subplot saying I want two different rows and one column. The first graph is going to be this, t over the amplitude. 
I'm sorry, my dog's having a barking fit. Um, so we're doing a subplot with two different columns, or one different column, two different rows. That's what these numbers stand for, the number of rows, the number of columns. So we've got our subplot, and in the first graph, the one on top, we're going to plot the time versus the amplitude. And I'm going to label the X and the Y axis on the second subplot. So I'm saying I want this to have two different rows, one different column, but this will be our second plot. So this will be the one on bottom. And I'm going to plot the time versus the phase. And if we run this, voila, we have um, a one figure that has two graphs on it, and that answers our original question, which was go ahead and plot the amplitude and the phase of this function. All right, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day.